just leave it up. That's fine. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us all pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the psalm antiphonally. I'll read the odd verses and you read the even verses. Well, I read the bits that are in, in normal and you read the bits that are in bold, sorry. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts. How long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and made our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man at your right hand. The Son of Man, whom you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God, O Lord of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. 
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you in, to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Il Santo Vangelo del Signore nostro Gesù Cristo secondo Marco. Gloria a te, Cristo Signore. In quei giorni, dopo quella tribolazione, il sole si oscurerà e la luna non darà più il suo splendore e gli astri si metteranno a cadere dal cielo e le potenze che sono nei cieli saranno sconvolte. Allora vedranno il figlio dell'uomo venire sulle nubi con grande potenza e gloria. Ed egli manderà gli angeli e riunirà i suoi eletti dai quattro venti, dall'estremità della terra fino all'estremità del cielo. Dal fico imparate questa parabola. Quando già il suo ramo si fa tenero e mette le foglie, voi sapete che l'estate è vicina. Così anche voi. Quando vedrete accadere queste cose, sappiate che Egli è vicino, alle porte. In verità, vi dico, non passerà questa generazione prima che tutte queste cose saranno avvenute. Il cielo e la terra passeranno, ma le mie parole non passeranno. Quanto poi a quel giorno e a quell'ora, nessuno li conosce, neanche gli angeli del cielo e neppure il figlio, ma solo il Padre. State attenti, vegliate, perché non sapete quando sarà il momento preciso. È come uno che è partito per un viaggio, dopo aver lasciato la propria casa e dato il potere ai servi, a ciascuno il suo compito, e ha ordinato al portiere di vigilare. Vigilate dunque, poiché non sapete quando il padrone di casa ritornerà, se alla sera o a mezzanotte, o al canto del gallo, o al mattino, perché non giunga all'improvviso, trovandovi addormentati. Quello che dico a voi, lo dico a tutti. Vegliate. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and great glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. 
Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one who is coming, Christ our Lord. Amen. Over the past week, I have taken up my annual discipline of reviewing the past year. It's not that I have forgotten that December isn't even here yet. It is that today is the first day of a new church year, the first Sunday of Advent. So Happy New Year. And for me, at least, this is the best time to do the work of prayerful review of the 12 months gone before. I commend this practice to you as your pastor as well. Do it now, avoid the holiday rush. You can well imagine that not a lot in the past year went as I thought it would. Probably that's true for you too. But wouldn't you just know it, last year on this very day, the first Sunday of Advent, I was standing right here in this place at this time, right here in St. James's. And in case you don't remember, because I didn't either, here is what I said. I am here to warn you as your pastor that whatever is coming, Whenever God begins a new thing, it surely means there will be a challenge and change and plenty of surprises. Well, beloved friends, don't say you weren't warned. I have been preaching long enough to know deep in my bones the message that I am supposed to bring to you today. It is a message about expectation and preparation. Most of you have been going to church long enough to be tuned in to that wavelength today. Today we are beginning our season of great expectation, looking forward to the coming of the promised Messiah on Christmas night. Watch and wait, Jesus teaches us today. Watch and wait. That's the preparation part. Get ready for what is coming. But you know... These long months of lockdowns and distancing and red zones have really drained me of any interest in waiting. All we have done since March is wait. We have waited for a path out of this dark time. We have waited for the chance to see each other's faces again. We have waited for this awful fear we feel about this randomly destructive disease to stop turning us into fearful people. When I was very young, my father would come home from work sometime in the middle of December with a Christmas tree. And it would go up in the front room of our house and then mysteriously wrapped packages would appear 
under it from day to day. And some of them had labels on them, making it absolutely clear that they were for me. And then I had to wait. I had to wait because for some reason you could not open Christmas presents until Christmas, even when they were clearly labeled for you. And my mother would explain to me that Advent was our season of expectation, and expectation meant waiting. Waiting until the promise was fulfilled and the baby was born in Bethlehem. So as far as I was concerned, Advent was the season of delayed gratification. Advent was the season of interminable waiting. The four weeks of teaching me every day that patience is a virtue. Well, maybe. But this year, I am not so sure. We are so hoping for an antidote to this terrible disease that has caused so many deaths, disrupted so many lives, and destroyed so many livelihoods. Patience may be a virtue, but at least when it comes to the antidote, we may be feeling a little anti-virtuous. All of this pent-up waiting we have been living with has been magnified here at St. James's. Even while all this trouble and turmoil has been going on, your faithful, devoted vestry kept at its work of searching for a new priest. And once they found him, we had to wait again. Wait to find out when he would come. Well, now we know that. He will arrive on December the 23rd. Richard's advent will be nearly as long as our Lord's. But we will have nearly as much joy at his arrival as we will have for the coming of Christmas. Even so, we are still waiting. We are tired of waiting. We are tired of making preparations. We are tired of being worried. Those words of Isaiah speak right to our condition today. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Come down now. Come now, vaccine. Come now, justice. Come now, peace on earth. Come now, righteousness. It is not wrong for us to feel impatient. It's not wrong for us to be tired of waiting. But a lot depends on what we do with our restlessness, what we do with our agitation. We can waste this energy on frivolities. We can invest our energy indulging in anger or in suspicion or in doubts or in what that wise old prayer calls the luxury of hurt feelings. Or we can invest our energy wisely in doing all we can, where we can, to get this broken world ready for what is coming. Because here is the news about Advent, brothers and sisters. Advent is not about waiting for something you already know. Advent is not about waiting for the vaccine. That is not, Advent is not even really waiting about Christmas. Advent's not even about waiting for Father Richard. Advent is about knowing God once fulfilled the promise of coming to live among us in Jesus, and God will fulfill once again another promise made to us, the promise that Christ will return in glory, that we will see the Son of Man coming with power and great glory. That is what we are waiting for. We're waiting for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, as St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians this morning. 
We're waiting for the coming of righteousness, for an end to all this sorrow and confusion. We're not waiting for a vaccine. We're waiting for the vindication of the way of love by the Prince of Peace. Now that, that is something worth waiting for. That is something worth getting ready for. There is every good reason for us to set aside our virtuous patience, set aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light to start making this house ready, to make our hearts ready for that day. Because God is faithful. And whether we are ready for it or not, that promise is coming. Amen. And now we affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and save the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, 
that we may use its treasures, resources, rightly, in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may save Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body and mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. We pray for those that are sick and in need. Loveling, testimony, praise, bright, prospect, Stella, Juliet, Chinoyerem, Muna, Chinaremen, Darlington, Nora, Jessica, Lydia, Alberto, Julie, Gilberto, Leonardo, Phil, Anita, Vicky, Raul, Katsunda. For Thanksgiving, Luigi and Peter, who tested negative. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that you will for them, may your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with your saints in the eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Doreen Smith, 60 years. Ruben, IG, Mangos, Iflanyi, Maria. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We join in the prayer for St. James Church. Faithful and loving God, you trace our journeys and our resting places and are a companion on the way. Sustain St. James Church with your grace. Bless us with joy, beauty, and wonder. Bind us together in fellowship and love. Let us be a refuge for the weary and a companion for the pilgrim. Give your anointing to Father Richard, that he may be a pastor who will care for your people. Equip us for our ministries and shine a light on your path. Grant that we may walk with you in the way of love and reflect your goodness and light always. This we pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and the hope of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom. And grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good to see you. Peace. Peace. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. James. I have to start just by asking you, were you worried when you saw this? <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't because I didn't see it, but happily there wasn't a flame uh, that, that grew out of this. I'm so delighted to be here and to be able to share with you the news that we have a date certain for the arrival of Father Richard. Not surprisingly, his travel here has been complicated by, I don't know, the small matter of a pandemic and the large matter of a dog, but... He will arrive on the 23rd of December, so keep him in your prayers. What this means for you is that you're stuck with me <laughs> all through the season of Advent, so we're just going to get to know each other. I'm sorry, but I'm glad to have a place to be for Advent. And I just delight in being here. And looking through the past year, as I mentioned in the sermon, I find that I've been here rather a lot this year. So um, we're, we're delighted to be able to be here, and we look forward to this holy season with you. For the last couple of weeks, we've been not having an open door on Sunday morning. It seemed the safest thing to do, but after consultation with the vestry and bearing in mind the regulations of the region, we thought the right posture for the door of the church on Sunday is to be open, if it can at all be open. People can't travel here if they're from outside Florence. We know that. So we will be small in number. We simply accept that reality. It means for those people to hear you, you have to speak up. Let them hear you. Because they are out there. We know they are. They write to me. So, we're glad that you're here. But the most important thing of all is make a wise decision about whether you feel safe traveling. And if Darlington finds that you have an elevated temperature, he's going to send you home. So, just remember that. Last thing for me is I found at the back of the church this morning, as I was getting ready, this. Have you seen this? You know what this is? Oh, Haswell has one, too. All right. Well, this, is, this, is, this is a pledge form. You all, should ha you all should look at these and study them. It is your ability to pledge to the life and the health of this church. I know there is no better way, because I've been a rector, there is no better way to welcome Father Richard than when the, telling him the news that a number of people have pledged to see to the health of St. James's next year, his first year of being among us. So take one of those, if you haven't already, and give it your prayerful consideration over the week to come. Any other announcements to come before the faithful? I'm looking at the senior warden. Uh, just um, 
to make it clear that um, if you don't receive an update, it's because we don't have your contact information updated. But it is essentially important, clearly critical at this point, that you communicate to the church office your contact information, email address, phone number, because these are the ways that we are communicating with the congregation. Whether you participate in person or you participate virtually, that is the only way and the best way you can be updated with us. In that, when you receive the email or the e-news, read it through. And those of you that have received last week's e-news, you see that there is anonymous survey that is circulating in the convocation of Europe. That is, we want to know our identity because we want to become a beloved community where people belong, welcomed, included. But we cannot if you don't feel the survey to know who we are so that we can know where we are going. And then I can't emphasize enough. All generations, past, future, will be blessed by your generous giving, stewardship. This is the time that I emphasize. You can go online, give a donation, update your stewardship promise of this past year and renew it for the coming year. That will help us keep this church lighting and keep serving those who will be traveling through this church. Be a blessing as you have been blessed. Thank you. Thank you as well. We come now to the offering. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.
May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Dopo la cena, prese il calice del vino, e dopo aver ringraziato, lo dete loro e disse, Bevantene tutti. Questo è il mio sangue, della nuova alleanza, versato per voi e per molti in remissione dei peccati. Ogni volta che ne bevete, fate questo in memoria di me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with James and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Would you wait right there? Just stay right there. Be right back. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. I am realizing that the post-communion prayer has not been provided to you in the leaflet. So, we are about to learn how well you have memorized the Eucharist service. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing, the mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and pray for in heaven and on earth, this day and always. Amen. Amen.